My name is Joshua Pierce. I'm the uh, Thompson Professor of Information Technology and Innovation at Western University in Canada, where I'm cross-appointed between the Ivy Business School and the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. I'm a specialist in solar photovoltaic research, and you can call me Joshua. Wonderful. So there's a lot of interest in, 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 in solar panels, and, and you keep seeing it more and more and more in homes, businesses, um, and in the tourism industry, in places like Hawaii, uh, et cetera. Uh, but we got a viewer question asking us if there's an actual federal tax help or any incentive on that big government level that can help you make the decision to change to solar panels. But before we get into that, how does this work uh, in general and also on a domestic level, if that makes sense? So we can walk us, you can walk us through how, how this can be a benefit in the long run. Sure. So right now, more or less, everyone that owns their home in the United States will probably reduce their overall electric utility bill by installing some solar photovoltaic panels on their roof. And solar photovoltaics, it's a relatively well-established technology that turns sunlight directly into electricity. That electricity is like DC, like the battery, like out of the battery, and you run it through an inverter, which makes it like the AC electricity that you get from your wall outlet. And the vast majority of systems in the, in the US are tied directly to the grid. And so during the day, you're producing electricity on your roof, and if you're not using it, that goes onto the grid. And then at night, when the solar panels aren't doing anything, electricity can flow back into the home. And most utilities through most of the US have some kind of net metering scheme where you're given credits for the electricity that goes on and, and you kind of anything that you use, uh, you pay for. And most systems are designed to cover approximately your whole load for the year. And so after you get a system and you install it, you have to pay a large upfront amount of money but then your utility bills will radically decrease. And if you did the math exactly right, they'll be zero. And so um, within the US now, excluding all tax benefits, it makes economic sense, like you'll earn a rate of return. Uh, there is a federal tax credit. So if you have tax liability, like if you're working and you're paying taxes, uh, you can take a substantial uh, fraction of your system off um, from taxes alone. And then depending on which state you're in, there's a database called Desire where you can look up and see all the other incentives that there are. So sometimes utilities will have an incentive. Uh, sometimes the state gives an incentive. Maybe there's a nonprofit group that's trying to encourage people to, to put up some solar for environmental reasons or economic reasons, and you can take advantage of those as well. Um, we did a study a, a few years ago in Michigan where we looked at every single house that we could get data for, and everyone in the state was going to make money. And some would save hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars a year, and it kind of depended on what your utility rates were and for your specific utility, if your house was going to be shaded or not with trees um, and, and the kind of how much energy you were using. And so that those are all kind of, they, those will change depending on who you are. Uh, but the, the bottom line is everyone can make money now and the, the federal tax break substantially increases your rate of return. When it comes to um, the things that we should look for, uh, if we make the decision to, because of course we cannot necessarily, I mean, I'm sure we could probably do it ourselves, but it might be a little complicated. Uh, but when it comes to um, um, hiring a company that provides the service, uh, as, as I understand that you need to hire a company that installs the panels in your roof and then um, makes the connection to your meter, meters and whatever, um, what, should we, uh, what should we look for in this services? Yeah, so the, when, you, when you decide that, that you want to consider this, um, the very first thing you should do is I recommend getting three quotes from uh, people that will do the installations in your area. And most of the country is covered by at least three. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, like maybe you only have one or two, but you should try to get more than one quote. The quotes will come in in a dollar per watt basis. So they'll tell you, you know, for a, let's say a 5,000 or 5,000 kilowatt system, they're going to charge you fifteen thousand dollars to install it, and that five thousand kilo or sorry five thousand watt or five kilowatt system would be enough to cover the average home. And you can expect in the average U.S. market now to be paying about three dollars per watt. And so everyone should be sort of around that price point. And some people might have better deals. Some people might be a little bit more expensive. But the, there's a couple things that you want to look for. One is that they're around that price point because if they're charging you six dollars a watt, you almost certainly can do better. Um, even if you're bringing in somebody from another state to, to do the install. 
Uh, you want to look to see that they've done other similar installs in your region. So if you're looking for residential or for your business, you don't want to be the largest system that they've ever put on. You want to, like, there's a lot of new players in the market and you want to go with someone that has some experience. Ideally, they'll have an electrician on staff that will keep the cost down because you need an electrician to connect to the grid. Uh, some of the smaller installers will hire an external electrician and you, you tend to pay extra for that. Uh, the actual installation process itself is not that complicated. If it's a rooftop system, it's like having the, the people that do it have basically the same skills that roofer has and they're tying all the wires together, running it to an inverter and then having an electrician do the final tie into the grid. Uh, to get a very quick kind of back of the envelope estimate of if your house makes sense, uh, the US government through the National Renewable Energy Lab provides the PV watts calculator. So you can literally trace out your rooftop, kind of like pick your Southern facing roof, trace it out. That'll give you an idea for how many watt, total watts or kilowatts you can install and what the economics will look like for your region. It's a really basic tool, but the energy estimator in it is quite strong. And so if you put in the right amount of surface area and the right tilt angle of your roof or your say backyard, if you're gonna put it on the ground, you will get a very good estimate of what, how much energy it's produced. And you can compare that number to what number you're getting from the installers. They should provide these quotes for free. Um, some of them might send someone out to your house, but they don't necessarily need to do that. They can use the same um, satellite photography to get a, a good estimate. Uh, if you are very handy, you can also put up the system yourself, as, uh, particularly if you have a plot of land like where you can put it in the backyard or you're going to do a ground-mounted system. Both systems can be installed themselves. And Lonnie Grafman and I wrote a book that tells you exactly how to do it. And it's a free book. You can download it and you have the PDF. And we, we wrote it mostly to help uh, people all over the world, particularly in the developing countries, build their own systems. But the same rules, like electricity follows the same rules no matter where you are. Um, most people can do most of the work to install a PV system. It's the final connection that you, you have to have a license of electrician. I understand that regardless of this government and, and, and um, the incentives, this can come at a cost. I'm not going to ask you exactly how much it costs because I'm sure it varies from place to place, but it, it, is, it, is it an expensive decision up front? It depends who you are. So, you know, with the housing market going ridiculous, putting solar on the roof of a new constructed home is like a no brainer. It, it, doesn't cost that much more. It's less than you're paying for your kitchen. It just makes sense. But if you already have your house and you've been living there a long time, or maybe you're on a, a lower income individual, it, the, to provide all of the electricity you need for your home with solar can be quite expensive. So using that kind of five kilowatts as a amount of power that the average home would need uh, and costing $3 per watt, you're looking at about $15,000 up front. And you can push that down by taking advantage of some of the, the federal and state um, incentives and you can push it down even further if you do it yourself but that's around what you're looking for a larger home that has a hot tub and a jacuzzi now you're looking at maybe 10 kilowatts and so you could take that 10 kilowatts times of three dollars and you're you're looking at an upfront cost of thirty thousand dollars and for many people that's a substantial investment uh, but what you have to remember is that uh, solar is warranted for 25 years so you're going to get 25 years out of these panels and i can tell you as an engineer it will actually do better than that uh, what you'll see is they, they warranty it for an amount of power that it will produce, and you can count on it getting a half a percent less efficient every year, just as it kind of, you know, everything wears out a little bit. It's you know, the front of the surface gets a little bit marred, so not as much sunlight gets in and that kind of thing. And so you're going to lose a half a percent every year. And so let's say over 20 years, um, you're going to not be producing as much power as you did on, on day one. But that's, it. you're buying all of your electricity, let's say for 25 years up front, and that's expensive up front. And so normally people look for some method of financing and many of the states, the incentive that they're actually giving you is basically a low interest loan to be able to cover the upfront costs so that you can afford to put the system in. And depending on the states, there's all different kinds of really, really nice programs, particularly if you're a um, low income individual, they probably have something um, available for you. Um, when it comes to, um, is there a way of quantifying or, or knowing how long does it take to, for that investment sort of to be reflected in my electricity bill? Like how long do I have to wait for me to like, oh, I, I to see like a substantial, uh, decrease or up to zero, like you mentioned at the beginning, uh, in my electricity bill. 
So that, that part's the fun part. That will happen basically the day that your system is installed. Most modern inverters have some form of, of data acquisition and feedback. And so you can get an like a phone application, not just an app, or you can look it up on your computer and you can see exactly what your system on your roof is generating. And um, if you work with your installer, they also have to convert that to money. So you can see from day one, how much money you're saving with your system. And that will, I can, I can guarantee it will be reflected in your bill. Assuming there's no mistakes, you will see that on the, the first month that you get your bill. Um, depending on the time of year, you might see that your entire bill wiped out. And so normally in North America, you know, during the summer, uh, like on the, the roof of my own house, we generate way more electricity than we use in the summer. And that kind of gets banked up by the, the utility. And then we try to go all the way through the winter without using up that bank. And so um, all, well, most years I can get all the way through um, to get all the way back around without ever having to pay a utility bill. Whether or not that works for you depends a lot on your utility, on how they do the accounting and how net metering is set up in your particular location. But you'll see, you'll see savings immediately and your rate of return, like you might have a payback time, let's say that's 10 years, that is equivalent to a rate of return of more than 10%. And that I think for people to do, to compare it to other um, investments, like say your savings account or a CD or your stock market portfolio, that's what you should be comparing it to. So don't, don't say, you know, oh, I, I invested in this $10,000 system for my house and it's not going to pay for itself for 12 years. It's 12 years, but it's guaranteed for 25 years. <laughs> so you're actually making really great money. And of course that savings is tax-free. You're not paying, it's not as if, you know, you're, you're getting interest on your savings account at the bank and you're paying taxes on that. You just get the electricity um, and you keep it for yourself. Now, the only limitation there is you can only cover your own electric load. So once you start exporting more than you're using, um, most utilities aren't gonna give you credit for that. And if they do, they're gonna treat you as if you're a generator and you're not, like it's not a way to make money. This is a way to, to save money from your utility bills. In, in which instances, this is not a possibility. Like what I mean is, is uh, if there's any types of structures or buildings out there that are unable to get this system. So in most jurisdictions, <laughs> the when you uh, sign a contract with a solar photovoltaic installer, they will send someone by to check, like they'll go up into your attic and look at, you know, are all of your beams in order? Like, will it make physical sense? And for the vast majority of homes and businesses, the extra weight of a solar panel isn't going to do anything to your structure. It's totally fine. If your structure can't handle it for some reason, and, and a good example I can give is uh, big box stores, they're usually designed to be just meet the code barely. And if you have too many people up on the roof, the whole thing's coming down, um, you might need to structurally reinforce those, those things. And that will add additional costs. And that should be told to you up front by the, um, the installer. Like that shouldn't be a surprise. That should be in the contract when they give you a final quote. My last question will be, um, what is the overall, uh, besides the financial benefit of it, that it's, it's, it, it might be attractive for a lot of people, where is the environmental benefit to make this decision? So that, that's an awesome question. And there are substantial. So yes, the money matters and you'll save money and that's great. Uh, but every kilowatt hour that your solar uh, photovoltaic roof or backyard system is producing means one less kilowatt hour that is produced by conventional means. And in the United States, uh, we are still using a lot of coal and a lot of natural gas. And when you burn those um, fossil fuels, you're creating greenhouse gases that can contribute to climate change. But the bigger one, at least to me, is the air pollution. Every year, 52,000 Americans are killed by air pollution from coal-fired power plants every year. And so you can imagine if like a terrorist said, we're going to kill 52,000 Americans next year. What are you going to do about it? We would bring out the military. We would just completely decimate them. But I can tell you right now, next year, 52,000 Americans are going to be, die from coal pollution. And if you're putting up solar panels, you're starting to cut into that the amount of pollution from coal. And already we've seen uh, many of the coal mines start to go under because it just simply can't compete with solar. Solar truly is the lowest cost form of electricity right now. And you can see that. So that's why utilities are building big, huge things. And that's why, you know, everybody from Google to Apple are putting up huge, big solar rays. Yes, they like the environment, but they're making money on it. They're, they're saving money on it. And when you put in your own system, 
you kind of are, you can also play as part of this game. You can directly offset your own emissions for your home so that you're not responsible for your neighbors having to deal with, with air pollution um, or the, the impacts of climate change in the future. Absolutely. Josh, this, this has been amazing and super instructive and, and useful, uh, hopefully for our viewers. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you think it's important for our general audience to know or to understand? Yeah, I, so I, I think the one, one thing that we didn't talk about is the cost. So for years, like if you had asked me last year, I would say solar is economic and the prices are dropping and they're just going to continue to drop as far as I can tell. Like technically, we have things in the pipeline now that will make the panels more efficient that should drop the cost even further. But this last year, the panel prices went up. So, so one of the, you know, when people are trying to make the decision, I think they need to take into account that the current global market is still all screwed up. That if you can afford to put in solar now and take advantage of the larger tax rebate from the, the government, this is when you should do it. If you wait a little bit, that tax rebate from the government is going to drop, but the bigger question, the bigger unknown is what's going to happen to the component prices. Um, a lot of modules are manufactured in the US and some of the inverters are, but a lot of it is, is made elsewhere. And right now that's sort of being allowed to come in, like US and China are kind of in a mini trade war over this. <laughs> so there's complicating factors that are way outside of the homeowner's um, control. And then the last thing, and maybe this is maybe the most important is, when you're doing the calculations for your own home and you see that you have a reasonable payback time, it's, you know, anything under 15 years is a no brainer. Uh, the reason you've seen so many systems in Hawaii is they can not only put up solar, they can also put in a battery system and still make money. <laughs> um, and the utilities are actually encouraging it because it's helping them get off diesel fuel as their source of generation. Uh, but when you're doing those calculations, the one thing you should consider is inflation. That if you're buying a large capital asset now, that you know is going to generate the revenue. You can see that it's going to generate X number of kilowatt hours every year. Those kilowatt hours are actually going to be more expensive in the future as energy costs escalate and everything else escalates. Your rate of return actually goes way up. So we've just been looking at that for some utilities where you know the numbers were just marginal. It just made sense for the utility to encourage electrification. Once you throw in inflation, it's like they should just be handing out money to everybody. From a, If you're an electricity provider like a utility, and you can take natural gas offline and bring it over to solar electricity, they will make money. And so that's that's the next step is after you electrify your current electricity, then you can think about that electric vehicle and putting in a heat pump in your house and running it all off of your, the solar from your roof.